I'm David Smith from Soho Housing Association. Can I just reinforce that point that's just been made in that research has been done right around the country now about the implications of areas of very, very large percentages of social housing. It's bad news in terms of education, health, employability, and a whole series of things. And lots of local authorities take the view that there is a limit, if you like, in areas in which more affordable housing, particularly social rented housing, is not helping the long-term life consequences of people, albeit short-term divisions there may be about the new housing. And I think whether you take 50% or not, I think you do your local work and you decide what that is. But I think this is a really, really sensible provision. What it does mean, of course, is you can't use this to reduce the overall numbers. If you reduce less, you're going to have less social rented accommodation in your high uh, social rented wards, you're going to have to have more in some of those areas where you've already perhaps decided you would like less. So it's like one of those funny old dogs that kids have, you know, that you're willing to make a little dog out. You can't squeeze it at one end, it's got to come out the other. So I think, yeah, I support this, but it is with a concomitant increase in the proportion of social rented housing in those areas where perhaps we haven't got too much. Absolutely. Yeah. Were there any other views on this question? Can I just say that yes. an example of what that man's just been talking about is Church Street. We're completely saturated with uh, social housing. However, I would say of the Liston Green Church Street components of the Church Street Ward, the, uh, there is a, about just over a third of the properties are lessee owned. These lessees owning their property have driven up standards in one way or another. I would now like to see across the Edgeway Road built a model unit that included new affordable housing because the area can only benefit. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Okay, uh, Seven Air, how can we ensure intermediate housing is affordable to a range of households? And I think we've already recorded quite a few views against this. I mean, there is some concern that there are no packages that are available that are genuinely affordable to those people who cannot access social rented accommodation and similarly can't afford market housing. Um, did anyone want to make a comment on, on delivering a, an intermediate housing products and whether or not they think there are some products out there that, that could genuinely meet that need? Why can't you go to the private the sector? Sorry, yeah. there's two people speaking at the same time. If the woman at the back had started speaking, if she could please finish. Yes, please. Yes, uh, your question. It seems to me that that's made for the private sector. You're bothering here with such minute mute details of the, of, the, of the housing complexion altogether, that why don't you make that a, a, a public-private consultation? And, and, and for those people, you're talking about intermediate housing, um, that there's, there's a package from the banks for the private sector that helps them with mortgages into where it's going to build a house for them that suits their needs. Okay. You're overstretching yourself. I mean, you really want to live most of what you're talking about already, but that. You want to get into. <laughs> okay, <laughs> the gentleman at the front. I try to make a point. Wealth creation. Now, a lot of people live in Westerners. They're very wealthy. They can afford all sorts of things, right. and they contribute to the economy of the area. How do you get hold of that so that you can help people who are less well off, our friend here, to live in a decent home? Well, that should be a policy. It's nothing to do with politicians, if you don't mind my saying so. You can do it within your own council. One thing I'll also say, Westminster Council have shown very, very um, open-mindedness in creating this discussion. I don't know of any other authority that I've heard of in this country that's doing what you people are doing, and I think it's very, very commendable. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the council oh, down the back. I'll come back to you. Um, I'm not sure I'm very aware of this just this, but in relation to um, intermediate housing, um, it's quite like I live in it um, through an RSF. Um, what I don't understand is quite whether or not, and things may have changed since mine was set up, I do not know what it does what it's supposed to do, because where my, the scheme I am part of, there are only six of us remaining in the, in the intermediate housing. The rest have 
bought up the freehold, and it's all sold on. It's gone completely out of anything approaching affordability. And though, and RSLs do that in any case when they think they can get a better deal for doing other things with. And I, it worries me a great deal that that can be done for purposes that actually are, it's just too difficult to sustain an intermediate housing project for certain organisations. And basically, at the end of the day, they don't really like having the six of us remaining. They want us to buy out our people and go away. And now the people who use those houses are wealthy people now buy them out. Okay. So could we just come to um, the, the officer just wanted yeah. to respond to that? I, I, I just get to say, maybe the answer to that is to have affordable homes where you can't buy more than 50%. You do with the home ownership. Sorry, just I, I can't. Sorry, I just can't. I can't comment on the context of the, the question and, and the area we're talking about, the properties we're talking about. But the basis of shared ownership, as I sort of come to understand it over the years, is the in, in the majority of cases it requires grant funding from the housing corporation and now the what's called the homes community agency. And shared owners must have the right, if they wish to, to staircase up to 100% ownership. And as a consequence, it may, in due course, leave the affordable housing sector and become private private housing. And, and, and that's basically, with, and the other point about the restriction, in some cases that's not currently allowed within the housing corporation funding regime to restrict um, ownership or outright ownership. Okay, this, this gentleman just here and there. Thank you. Well, I live in Wesley's Gardens, which is part of West Portland Park. And before the right, the right to buy, we had a good association and we had a good standard of uh, living at Wesley's Gardens. And since the right to buy, we're now 50% leaseholders. And before the right to buy, we are also 10% of the most deprived areas in the country. And after the right to buy, and 50% of leaseholders, we're still 10% of the most deprived area in the country. So having this wealth being brought into the state makes no difference whatever. None whatever. Okay, when the housing associations came down our streets when they were slums, they were given the houses and the corporation gave them the money to make it possible for us to live in. Now what happens, I'm looking out of my window and there's a studio flat across, I can see the back from the other street, St Michael's Street. And the housing association sold it for 200 and something thousand pounds. Right? Now, they got out, uh, and the policy of apparently, you can tell me if I'm wrong or right here, if it costs more and they don't recoup the money that they make it up to the standard of housing, yes, they, can, uh, they will only sell it because if they don't get the rent back, within 10 years, am I right or wrong, they can sell the properties. I have got the auctioneer's book, and I've seen houses in Islington, three flat, three, a house with three bedrooms, two bedrooms and one bedroom, and it seems a nonsense that people are looking for homes, they're supposed to be social landlords, yes, they're restricted by the government, so I can't do things about that, but surely there should be a human cry, right? Why are they selling off houses to the private sector when they already got them in the beginning to be social landlords. Yes, they've got a plight of how they're going to do them up. I don't know about that, but I will never understand in a million years that they took our streets over, promised us the heavens, yes, and this is what they're doing now down my street, Star Street, W2, there's already four, two two, two bedrooms, one bedrooms and a studio being sold. And I am looking, again, I don't mean my granddaughter, I'll fight for her. But I am looking out of a window that where I was born in, the street, right? And we were a community like that chap says there. And they have told us they are now selling the properties. And we are a mixed group there, which is good. Because I tell you what, when you've got the mixed group, they do ask for value for money. And I'm sorry to say that you find your block with the leaseholders in, right? They are asking for better things. They are asking for the doors to be shut. They are asking for the lighting. They are asking for the rubbish to be collected. <laughs> oh, yes, it does, because I'm watching it. 